The birth of animal babies on land is no mystery to scientists, but how does birth look like underwater? How, for example, are whales and dolphins born? What are the peculiarities of giving birth to baby octopus, and which males from the marine animal world play the role of mothers? You're about to find out. In this episode, I'll tell and show you how marine animal babies are born. There will be a lot of interesting things to see. Let's go! Seahorse The seahorse is probably the most unusual parent in the underwater world. We used to think that females should take care of their offspring, but this genus of sea creatures doesn't fit the stereotype at all. In case of seahorses, it's the male that has the baby. During the breeding season, it swims up to the female. The two fish press to each other, and at this point, the male opens his pocket wide, and the female throws a few eggs in it. Then the new father carries future babies in a special pocket on its abdomen from 9 to 45 days. Recently, scientists were able to find out an amazing fact. The pocket of the male is really involved with the rearing of offspring. Biologists were able to establish that it provides eggs with calcium, fats, oxygen, and other nutrients, and cleans the water from products of vital functions. The seahorse's role as a father does not end with the nurturing of the offspring. After the birth of Fry, the male carries them in the pocket for some time. Bending its body upward in an arc, it opens the pouch and the Fry come out of it. But in case of danger, they hide there again. Yellowhead Jawfish it's unlikely that many of you have heard about this fish, which lives on coral reefs in the Caribbean Sea. Yellowhead jawfish live at depths of 3 to 40 meters. Small fish with a length of 10 to 12 centimeters is easy to recognize by the bright yellow head and silvery body. Yellowhead jawfish prefer moving through the shallows in small groups of up to 70 individuals in each. As in the case of the seahorses, the male individuals of the species attract particular attention of scientists. They're great babysitters and nurse all their babies themselves, and do it in a very unusual way with their mouths. After the female lays eggs, the male fertilizes it and puts it in its huge mouth. The nurturing process isn't easy. For the entire nurturing period, the male has to give up food, and in order to feed the eggs with oxygen, it periodically spits out the eggs and sucks them back while they're not scattered far away. However, unlike the seahorse, with the appearance of fry, the paternal instinct of the yellowhead jawfish is disabled, it loses interest in the offspring and no longer cares about them. Frilled Shark Surprisingly, scientists still know little about this ancient shark species. The species was first described between 1879 and 1881, but since then its study has progressed very slowly. The main reason for the difficulties is considered to be the great depth at which this ancient shark lives. It lives in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans at a depth of about 1,575 meters from the surface. By the way, the frilled shark looks more like a sea snake or eel than the shark's closest relatives. Because of the presence of primitive features, the frilled shark is called a living fossil. Although its size is relatively small, the maximum recorded length was about 2 meters. Females of the species are larger than males, which isn't surprising. They require increased stamina to bear offspring, because pregnancy of this species lasts up to three and a half years. Unlike other fish, which give birth to a huge number of fry, most of which do not survive to adulthood, these sharks are focused on quality, not quantity. This species has the longest gestation period of any vertebrate, with the female laying its eggs inside its own body. The babies develop inside the eggs, feeding on the yolk, and hatch only when fully mature and ready to survive on their own. A newborn prehistoric shark baby is about 50 centimeters long. Unfortunately, scientists haven't yet been able to get detailed footage of the birth of frilled sharks, but they don't lose hope of filming a full documentary series in the near future. I'm sure they'll succeed because they've recently discovered new details of the birth and development of whales with the help of cameras. Stay tuned to find out how it was and to see the births of other sea animal babies. Octopus Did you know that baby octopuses hatch from eggs? Unfortunately, this is the most positive fact of octopus reproduction. Females of this order of sea creatures can bear offspring only once in their life, so this process is extremely important for them. Octopuses inhabit all tropical and subtropical seas and oceans, from shallow waters to depths of 100 to 150 meters. They prefer rocky coastal areas, looking for caves and crevices in the rocks. The nest for their future babies is a hole in the ground, encircled with a rampart of stones and shells. 
After fertilization, the female builds a nest in a burrow or cave in shallow water where it lays up to 80,000 eggs. It's always taking care of the eggs. The female is constantly ventilating them by flushing them with a stream of water as well as constantly removing any foreign objects and dirt from the clutch of the eggs with its tentacles. Surprisingly, during the active phase of their lives, octopuses boast excellent hunting skills and are very fond of snacking. But during the entire period of egg development, the female is left at the nest without food and often dies of exhaustion after giving birth to its babies. Deep-sea octopuses spend several years near the clutch of eggs because the low water temperature makes egg development particularly long. Unfortunately, not all babies manage to survive to maturity after hatching. In general, the survival rate depends on the habitat region and other specific conditions. In some cases, only 1% of the offspring survives. Dolphin Many people adore dolphins, but have you ever wondered how many babies of these amazing creatures are born? Unlike many ocean fish, dolphins are viviparous. Depending on the species, a female dolphin pregnancy lasts from 10 to 18 months. It's noteworthy that the female part of a pod of dolphins surround the future mother on all sides, supports it, and protects it from attack by predators. Before giving birth, it swims away from the group accompanied by an older female, the so-called godmother, which will help it in the birth, acting as a midwife and then a nurse. It will look after the baby while the mother gets food. Later on, the babies are fully nurtured and raised exclusively by the female part of the pod. By the way, the female is able to give birth and raise only one single baby dolphin for several years. The newborn baby tries to swim from the first minutes of its life. The mother calls it with a cry and nudges it with its nose, raising the baby to the surface of the water to give it an opportunity to take a breath of air, thus opening its lungs. It's only a few weeks after birth that the baby gets used to the water and learns to swim. It'll take three to five months before the babies will get their own food. However, the pod has enough time to raise them, considering the fact that one female cannot have two or more babies at once, and new members of the group reach maturity not earlier than at the age of five years. Whales Usually, in case of mammals, a male and a female form a stable couple, at least until their offspring becomes fully independent. During this time, the mother feeds the babies with its milk and the father protects the family and gets food. However, in case of whales, things are different. Once the female is fertilized, the male safely returns to the pod. Females bear offspring, usually from 10 to 12 months, but as a rule, a baby is born 11 months after conception. Some involvement of other whales in the fate of the offspring can be seen when, after almost a year of bearing offspring, the female prepares to give birth. As in the case of dolphins, at this point the other females in the pod surround it and do not leave, assisting and protecting it from predators. As a rule, only one baby is born, but it's born with a fully developed layer of fat, necessary for the thermal insulation of the animal. The baby makes its first act of breathing at the moment of its surfacing. This reflex is stimulated by the sensation of environmental change. Like other marine mammals, the newborn whale cannot swim. It waves its tail desperately, but it doesn't manage to move an inch. For the first hours of its life, it's helpless and doesn't even stay afloat because its body mass exceeds the density of water, and its lungs are not yet developed enough to take in the necessary amount of air. Whales Feeding Most recently, researchers were able to film whales feeding their young. This process is very difficult to observe because whales are very large animals that can move around the entire world ocean. Thanks to cameras, scientists from the University of Hawaii, Stanford University, and the University of California filmed how humpback whales feed their babies. Each year, female humpback whales give birth to their babies in the warm, shallow waters of the Hawaiian archipelago and nurse their offspring from January to March before their long migration to Alaska. The research team set out to find out how often and for how long whale babies feed to get strong enough for their spring migration. Special cameras were attached to seven humpback whale babies using suction cups. The team also used drones to observe the whales from above. As the scientists note, they managed to get unique and rare footage, which allows studying the process of feeding humpback whales. Experts hope that the data obtained will help to learn more about the life of these incredible animals. That's all, guys. Have you ever seen animals give birth? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.